Erectile dysfunction. Have you heard of it? If you haven't, you will in this video. In this video, we're going to be looking at the different mechanisms, myths, and misconceptions about erectile dysfunction. But first of all, I'd like you to watch this video. It's the elephant in the room. Seriously. Okay, Jim. Anything else? No, it's all good. Nothing else I can help you with? Everything's fine. Well, no, it's all good. Well, there is a bit of a problem. Downstairs. It's okay to have that awkward conversation with your GP. They have them every day. If you have erection problems, talk it over with your GP. You may be wondering why Pfizer has spent so much money on this ad campaign. Pfizer produces the world's top erectile dysfunction drug called Viagra. Have you heard of it? Well, Viagra in 2014 alone contributed to $1.6 billion in Pfizer's income. That's a lot of money. So, erectile dysfunction. It mainly affects people above the age of 40, but you and I under the age of 25 are still at risk. Do you want to know why? Cardiovascular disease, diabetes, as well as poor general health and smoking are only a few reasons why our generation is also at risk at erectile dysfunction. It's not a grandpa disease like everyone says it is, but we're all at risk, just a smaller risk. For some men, an erection is a normal response to stimulants, but there's a small percentage of us that need a little boost. That's where the drugs come in. PDA5 inhibitors are one of the most common drugs used for erectile dysfunction. Viagra is one of them. So, what do these drugs do? Well, this class of drug primarily prevents degradation of cyclic GMP, which is normally produced when nitric oxide enters the blood to create an erection. But cyclic GMP constantly gets degraded, and that's where you lose your erection. But these inhibitors prevent this degradation of cyclic GMP. And that's how men who take these drugs are able to maintain and produce an erection. While PDE5 inhibitors are the most common, there's a new class of drugs called prostaglandin. Caverject, which is the trade name for the drug, is actually an injection into the penis when you need an erection. Sounds painful, but a lot of doctors actually suggest using Caverject because you don't risk having an erection that runs for more than four hours. Because once the drug is gone, and it only lasts for a certain period of time, your erection's gone. So, unlike Viagra, Caverject is a much preferable method. So, we've gone over the physiological implications and the interventions, but we haven't really talked about the mental toll of having erectile dysfunction. He can have low self-esteem, his partner can have low self-esteem. He can feel frustrated and so can his partner. Do you see what I'm saying? Erectile dysfunction doesn't necessarily just affect the one person. It can affect a whole relationship or a family dynamic. The most miscommunicated myths are tight pants and erectile dysfunction. Tight pants do not cause erectile dysfunction. Another thing is, erectile dysfunction doesn't mean that you have no sexual desire. Erectile dysfunction is purely physiological. So to say someone has no sexual desire is completely false. And also, just because you have marital issues, it does not mean you have ED. Another thing is, did you know that most males that are affected by erectile dysfunction are aged 40 or greater? And 18% of men in the United States are affected by ED. Of the 18%, 5% are aged 20 to 40. So just because me and you are under the age of 40, it doesn't mean we're not at risk. It just means we're at a lower risk. So we've talked about the synthetic remedies for erectile dysfunction, but we really haven't talked about the natural ones. Well, to begin with, there aren't very many out there, and the ones that do prove to help through the literature don't actually really help. For example, ginseng has been proven to help with erectile dysfunction, but looking into the literature, there's been very little research published on the topic. So whether you're using synthetic remedies or natural remedies, make sure you consult your general practitioner before making any choices about erectile dysfunction. And Dr. Google is not one of them.